You are in the autonomous vehicle space, and recently Tesla has been known for ramping up their autonomous vehicle availability with full self-driving. Um, I wanted to ask, what is your view of the future technologically? What should, be, what should we be excited and afraid of? Because this technology obviously enables a lot of cool things to happen, but do you envision a future where maybe this limits freedom or enables government surveillance, that sort of thing, limits... If the autonomy. government wants to surveil you, they can. <laughs> it's not the self-driving car that's preventing them. Um, uh, a fear, you know, for the heart of fear is a misunderstanding, right? Once you start learn learn a subject well enough, th th there, there is, and it's like, it's like when people get afraid of, like, large language models, and, you know, once you actually... Uh, work with them, you realize their limitations. Uh, in autonomy, just, uh, just a two cents there, um, the general autonomy ecosystem is falling into two broad categories. There's gross generalizations, but it's the Waymo way and the Tesla way. Tesla 12.3, incredible product, but it is not full self-driving uh, in the sense of it literally cannot operate without a human. You need to have a human there, eyes on the road, hands on the wheels. That is required. Uh, that's not the case with Waymo. You can have, have a driver out. The, the, the constraints, roughly, are Waymo is geographically constrained, and they are, over the next five, ten years, are looking to see how can we expand that geography as fast as possible to get the most addressable market. Right now, you have to be in Phoenix or some parts of SF to, to, to experience it. Tesla, on the other hand, again, gross generalizations, or the OEM path, or the passenger car personal private ownership of the vehicle, is the, f the, the highway system works, the link, you can go everywhere, but you just can't do everything. And you have to be in the loop. The human has to be in the loop, uh, like you know, g giving commands. So the fun, the you know, trillion dollar question is, what is going to be the prevalent way? And I think you can make arguments. That's extremely heated. I think you can make arguments both ways. I think personal car ownership is not going away anytime soon. When you buy a car, people, a car's lifetime tends to be 15 years. So even if every car was an EV that was autonomous, it would still take a generation for all the old cars to actually come out of the system. So. That's just the reality of the situation. In terms of uh, risk, I mean, I think we're, we're now at a part in the industry, if we're having this conversation in 2017, when we started the company, there was a big question like, will self-driving happen? It's definitely gonna happen. Uh, it's no longer a research and development problem, it's moved over to the engineering side. Engineering is, so the, full, the full line is, it's a, it's a cost problem. It's an engineering cost problem. So what, how do you get this to be as cheap as possible so it's generally available? By the way, if you go back in technology, mobile and a bunch of other technologies, they appear the same way. Even automobiles are not generally available immediately. Uh, cars, uh, Mercedes uh, 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 invents the car in 1876. The first stop sign in the octagon form is 1930. And then the first time it's, it's uh, uh, the, the, the Department of Transportation is 1960. So it's a long time for these things to emerge. You can say, well, today things, technology grows faster, et cetera, but it, it's gonna take some time for autonomy to get over there. But it is no longer a research and development problem. Like, that's solved. Now we just gotta make it cheap.